the manager of the Los Angeles Angels, Mike Sosha. Thanks for joining me, Mike. I appreciate it. All right, Rich. So what is it like watching Trout and Pujols do what they do, and not only just in comparison for what it does for your team and what you've seen even as a player in your time in a Major League Baseball diamond, what you're witnessing, Mike? Well, it's, um, it's, it's fun to watch every day. And uh, just speaking of Mike, uh, uh, this, you know, Mike Trout's an exceptional talent. I think people on highlights see the home runs. They don't see the little things he does every day, how, how fast he is, how he covers ground in the outfield, the way he plays defense, uh, the good at-bats that he has, the walks that he takes. Everything that Mike does, it's, it's incredible. I've never seen a guy with the depth of talent that, uh, that Mike has. I didn't see Ken Griffey Jr. when he was younger, and I know that he was an extraordinary talent when he was young. But I can't imagine um, um, and being any, any better than what Mike is doing now. And Albert on the other end, obviously, uh, you know, these guys, one, one guy's just starting his career, one guy's uh, – uh, moving forward in his career, uh, he, he this year he's rejuvenated. He's healthy. His legs are strong, and we're seeing Albert attack the ball the way he did in St. Louis. So uh, uh, those two guys are having terrific years. Uh, they're they're a foundation of our offense, obviously. But uh, just a footnote: we need to be more than these guys, and I think a lot of the boost that we've gotten here in the last three four weeks is with our lineup from one through nine getting deeper and stronger and, 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 and uh, just, just scoring more runs. And before we, we do hit on, on some of those additions, including your latest one in Shane Victorino, I just want to stick with Trout a little bit here, harnessing this talent. I mean, you've seen it, you know it, you knew you had it when he first came up to. What, what has this been like for your process, Mike, as a manager, as a skipper, to harness Mike Trout and keep him on this upward path you know, Mike's a very grounded kid, and I think it's, it comes from his parents. Uh, they've done a great job with him. He, he has great uh, perspective on not only uh, life, but uh, but what he needs to do on the baseball field. He, he keeps it simple. Uh, I don't think it's anything about harnessing talent. I think you want it to blossom, and you want it to go out there, and you want guys to to maybe butt up against uh, an end point and then burst through it. And, and Mike's done that. You know, when he first came up at 19 years old, uh, you want this kid to play, and uh, along the way, maybe uh, his, his teammates, whether it was Tor Hunter at that time or, or Albert Pujols or a coach that he works uh, closely with, whether it was Dino Ebel or or, or, uh, or or myself, would point him in the right direction. But not very often. This game is the best teacher. So I don't think you want to harness it. I think you let it go, let it blossom, and his confidence level has always been very high. And I think that's why you see a, a, just a, a talent that, that – that brings it on the field and is extremely productive. I'm on the phone with Mike Sosha uh, of the Angels here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. And also another outside view looking into your clubhouse, Mike. It's not just the trout and pool holes homering and the pitching that you're getting uh, from kids like Heaney, but the fact that Jerry DePoto, uh, no longer with the organization, and whatever might have been going on uh, with the front office and with you and your, your coaching staff has been removed and the, the team has been able to focus and play better because of that. How, how would you respond to that supposition about your team, Mike? Well, I think a couple of things. I think uh, our team is, uh, I think, has got a, a great mental makeup. It's, it, it's, a, uh, it's a grinding type team, and these guys are great at filtering out distractions. Uh, and distractions come in all, in all forms. Uh, with some you know, early in the year, some guys were having tough starts, and and uh, we weren't doing some of the things we needed to do on the field. That could be a uh, distraction as you, as you possibly could put more pressure on every at bat or more pressure on every game. Certainly, what was going on in the, in our front office uh, could to be have been a potential distraction. But and, these guys, sure, go ahead. Me, no, go ahead. I said, I said, but these guys, these guys came to the park uh, every day. Uh, their prep was incredible. Their pregame's incredible. Incredible. They got ready to play every day, and they played every game hard, uh, one through nine innings, and um, and and they they turned it around. The guys in the clubhouse have played to their potential, and we're getting wins. And uh, Shane Victorino now on your on your squad, interim GM Bill Stoneman, um, uh, pulling the trigger on this. How how integral are you in when you, uh, in in this process when you go ahead and well, trade for somebody yeah, like Shane? Bill, Bill and I have uh, have a little history and. Uh, we have a great relationship, and he's kept me abreast on everything that uh, that that has been uh, proposed and considered. And uh, when he brings something that makes sense, uh, he he he's uh, he asked my opinion, and that's the way he worked uh, when we first started 16 years ago. I give him my opinion, and uh, sometimes he'll he'll uh, accept it, and sometimes he'll say, "No, that just doesn't make sense to me." But uh, he's he's certainly uh, keeping all of us in the loop. And uh, the first uh, you know acquisition since he got back. Uh, as a GM, and Shane Victorino, we're happy, happy to have him. He'll be here uh, tonight with us in Houston. And uh, you're going to put him right in the lineup tonight? 
we're going to see what time this plane lands, Rich. That's always, <laughs> that's, always, uh, that's always a consideration. You never know, especially with some of the weather that pops up down here. Sure. So are, are, are the Angels done, uh, or you're still, you're still in the market here to try and add some pieces between now and the deadline Friday, Mike? Well, uh, you know, I, I think uh, if, if, if everything holds up the way it is, uh, we really like our team. But you're always concerned, especially when you have some young pitching and some guys like Hector Santiago and Andrew Heaney and guys like Matt Shoemaker in our rotation that maybe haven't gotten to that, uh, you know, that, that 190, 200 pitch uh, inning uh, plateau, um, you know, during the season, how they're going to hold up in September. And especially in the bench, we have some young guys, Taylor Featherston, who was in double A last year, that uh, was a rule five draft on our team. Uh, you're always looking for depth. So, uh, you know, just like, uh, you know, we, we just played on Sunday and you see Mike Trout center field roll his wrist and you see Eric Ibar and Matt Joyce collide. Uh, you know, these are, these are things that happen during a baseball season. You always want to have guys that can fill in and keep you going. And, and I know that's something that, uh, that, that Bill's going to pay a lot of attention to. And I know, so, yeah. you know, I know you got to catch your bus uh, heading to the stadium, uh, Mike. Yeah. So I just want to keep you for a couple more questions, if that's okay. Just sure. Jared Weaver coming back from his left left hip injury how close is he mike he, he's gonna throw uh he's gonna throw in a rehab start on thursday uh, out in uh, california and in the, the cal league and uh he'll throw probably around four um you know four innings of 60 pitches and uh just see just see how everything comes out and how he feels and uh hopefully uh, he made a lot of progress in the last month and hopefully he's close to returning and after this big series with houston you head to uh, chavez ravine your old stomping grounds as a player um, and with Zach Greinke, he's going to be there Friday night. You had him with the Angels also. His scoreless streak, uh, inning streak, just ended at 45 and two-thirds. You were the starting catcher when Oral uh, set that record with 59 innings. Uh, I, I, I just would love to know your recollection of what Oral was like and how remarkable this Greinke run was in, in light of your, your firsthand knowledge of it. Well, you know, Oral, uh, he, he was very focused every time he pitched, and I think he knew what he was doing as you start to get the, the innings start to add up. But to be honest with you, we're in a pennant race, and uh, and as an everyday player, uh, you know you're on to the next pitcher, and you're you're focused on the next game. But it became uh, evident, I think, uh, as he as he got within about you know uh, 15 innings of, of breaking the record that hey, this is you know this is incredible because I think of all the records that are out there, and you think of Joe DiMaggio 56 game hitting streak. I think everyone felt that Don Drysdale's scoreless streak was going to hold up forever. They just didn't know how that would ever be broken. And uh, and Oral, Oral uh, had an incredible, just uh, you know, I mean, you came. It's just magnificent season in '88. He did everything for us. And Zach Greinke obviously was on a great run, um, you know, this year. Well, what was it like putting a sign down and just knowing your pitcher was just in another worldly zone? Mike, what was that like? I don't know if it was that easy, Rich, but it was always, you know, we played good defense behind them, but Oral had, uh, yeah, he had excellent stuff, uh, you know, had heavy sinker, really good curveball. Uh, he was making his pitches. Uh, you know, some balls were hit hard. I mean, it wasn't like every uh, every time we went out there, it was just, uh, you know, a cakewalk. Uh, he sure. had to work for outs, and he did. And, uh, you know, Oral worked very hard to keep himself in shape and to be able to hold up. And not only did he hold up through that season, but he really, he, he, he carried us through the playoffs. When he took the ball to the playoffs, we just felt, hey, we're, we're going to win this game. And he, uh, he always rose to the occasion. Well, uh, Mike, I appreciate you calling in. You know, um, this, this show is on the, uh, the Angels station in Southern California, and frequently the Rich Eisen Show logo pops up behind home plate in one of those, uh, those screens. And we've noticed your, your, your hitters hit much better with the logo up there. So if you want to tell management to put the, the show logo and promotion up there more, we're, we're all for it, Mike, okay? I'll tell you what, Rich, if you can prove that, I will go out there myself with a paintbrush <laughs> and paint it on permanently <laughs> and so it will never leave if you can prove that because that's, uh, that, that, that's good mojo right there. Yeah, my stat guys are right on it right away. All right. Okay, Thank Mike, you, Rich. You bet. Thanks again. Okay, you bet. Bye. That's Mike Sochin. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.